Do you think I have ADHD? I do. Now, the question would be, who has it in your family? Because it doesn't just show up. But often, children who have ADHD have one or both parents who have it. Where does it come from, ADHD or ADD? Well, it's genetic. Okay. It's clearly genetic. I mean, I if I don't see it in someone's family, I think head trauma. And with you, I think that's possible because of soccer, um, except you see it in your family. Um, and if I was to hazard a guess at which one of my parents had ADHD, and this is just me guessing, not trying to diagnose my parents, I would say it's, it would have been my mother. Why? She's the, she's the most irritable. Handwriting isn't great. She is a little bit more sort of like sc scattered, I should say. She's a lot more messy. My dad is like very organized with everything. My mom's very, very, very messy, like me. Um, the, the other thing I would ask is what did teachers say about you? I went back to speak at my school to the GCSE and A-level students. I've done it twice. And I remember one of the teachers came up to me, bear in mind at this age, I'm 24, 25 years old. And she said, you were a useless student, but you were nice. You're a nice person. I was never swearing or throwing chairs, but I was useless. And I spent most of the time in the exclusion unit, which is where you go if you don't do your homework or you don't attend. I just couldn't sit in classrooms. I couldn't sit in classrooms and stay focused on what they were telling me, especially when I wasn't interested. That's been like a defining quality of my life. I'm exceptionally good at not doing things I'm not interested in. And I'm, ex and I'm good at when I'm interested, but when I'm not interested, I could see my peers almost like will themselves to engage in things they're not interested in. I'm, I, will, I could never do that. And I've always said I'm an, a remarkable quitter. So you think about stop going to school, then went to university for one day and was like, nope, never went back after that first day. So, so it's, it's a very important piece of advice for people who have ADD is pick something you love not a job that you think you'll just make more money in. And mm -hmm. that's another sort of piece of the puzzle that completely fits with having ADD. And as, as we know, there are problems with it, but there are also huge benefits of it. Your prefrontal cortex, when it works too hard, so... I imagine if I scanned your dad, that it would be busy because he's very organized and like collecting. Um, but there's less creativity that goes with the busy frontal lobes. When they're a little bit sleepy, you entertain all sorts of thoughts and you're a little less rule bound than people whose prefrontal cortex more active. They like rules and they like sameness and they like predictability. And probably like some of that because I think you inherited some of your dad. That's the top of the diamond. But you're obviously very creative. Mm. Is it a defect or is it a difference? It's a difference. If I, if I chose to take a drug was it like you called it Ritalin? I think you called the what are the so drugs? Ritalin would be one of the options. Whatever drug it was, what exactly would it do under brain scanning to my brain? So if I scanned my brain and took the drug, what would you see in my brain? Well, I can tell you, it would activate your cerebellum. Okay, the bit that was a bit sleepy. It was a bit sleepy, and it would activate your prefrontal cortex, and um, it would give your brain better energy. So my first spec scan, 1991, a woman, she tried to kill herself the night before. I went to the lecture on brain spec imaging and then I walked out of the lecture and she was my new patient. Her name was Sandy. She tried to kill herself the night before. And as I'm getting to know her, I'm thinking she has ADD. She has an eight-year-old son who has ADD, talked about the genetic connection. She had an IQ of 144, but never finished college. And I'm like, how'd you study 
She said, well, I never really did, except maybe the night before a test, I'd put on a pot of coffee, stay up all night cramming, and then I'd take the test. That's classic ADD way of doing things. And I'm like, you know, I think maybe you have adult ADD. And she goes, oh, adults don't have ADD. And I'm thinking, I'm the doctor. But I'm like, well, how about if we look at your brain? And... And I knew from other work I'd done that I should do it twice at rest and concentration. And when she tried to concentrate, her brain completely deactivated, turned off. Like for you, Willing did it once, but if I had done it twice, probably your brain would be busier at rest. And then when you try to do it, it would drop. And I put the pictures on, uh, a couple of days later, I put the picture on the table in front of her and as I explained it to her, she started to cry. And she said, you mean it's not my fault? And I said, having ADD is sort of like people who need glasses. And I wear glasses to drive and took my glasses out, put them on. And I said, people who wear glasses aren't dumb, crazy, or stupid. Our eyeballs are shaped funny. And yeah. we wear glasses to focus. I said, people have ADD aren't dumb, crazy, or stupid. Some of them are the brightest people I know. But their frontal lobes deactivate. Taking the medicine is like glasses for your frontal lobes, help you focus. And she did it. She was conflict driven. She was always poking her husband. They got into a huge fight, which is why she tried to kill herself. She stopped that. She's a better mom. She went back and finished college. I mean, her life's, it's like your brain with glasses. Wow. My friends that take medication for ADD say that. To me, they say it's like their life is before and after that moment. So I've, you know, I've, I completely believe what you're saying. ADD and ADHD are different terms for the same thing. 1980, the American Psychiatric Association's DSM, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, I hate that, but it's what we have, was Attention Deficit Disorder, ADD, with or without hyperactivity. 1987, God knows for what reason, they changed the name to ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, basically throwing out half the people who have it because half the people who have ADD or ADHD are never hyperactive. And they don't get diagnosed because they don't bring enough negative attention to themselves for parents to go, you have a problem. And you're giving me a problem. Um, so anyway, different names for the same thing. And if you can manage it by having extra help for the things you're not good at, with exercise, with all of the good habits you have, well, that's awesome. If you want to be 10% more focused, like I treat this writer um, and she only takes medicine when she has to get stuff done, but she never takes it when she writes because she has 16 plot lines going on at once in her books. And she goes, no, I think it decreases my creativity a little bit. Interesting. Because the, the fact that we're medicating the a brain like mine i i go is that for professional optimization because if you just go back like i don't know a couple hundred years if you go back even further to a time when we couldn't like read or write there wasn't computers and all of these things you would have had no idea that you know if you go if you go back far you wouldn't have been able to tell a really an, an adhd well what i'm trying to say but you'd is, be able to tell their life i mean i have a patient from ethiopia mm -hmm. and I'm like, so tell me the impact in your culture. And he said, the people with severe ADHD get excluded because they can't be relied on. And the isolation causes great shame and pain. Um, and they have no idea it's a brain thing. I've really never taken medication in my life. Even like if I get a headache, I don't take medication. I'm not the type of person I probably haven't taken a pill in like really in years. The only time I've taken medication is if I have a severe infection of sorts. 
So like there was this one time where like my foot was going green and I'd stood on some glass, whatever. And it was really getting out of control. I'm talking like a two inch <laughs> purple thing growing on my foot. I thought, okay, instead of getting my leg cut off, I'll take this medication the doctor's given me. Otherwise I just do not take it. So I would rather go through severe pain than take medication because I believe that my body can fix things. Um, so when I think about taking ADD medication or ADHD medication, I don't really know the difference. I go, well, if my, if I'm messy or if I'm, my handwriting's bad or whatever it might be, then that's just who I am. And that's okay. I can get better at it. I can be less, I can be more organized, but why, why do I want to take medication? Well, What's I'm that? not going to, I'm not going to be the one to sell you on medication, but what I would say is, so a lot of times people ask me the side effects of medication mm -hmm. and for stimulants for ADD, it could be it decreases your appetite or can negatively affect your sleep. But you always have to ask the second question, which is what are the side effects of not taking the medicine? What's the impact on your life, on your business, on your money, on your relationships, on your health? Because living with untreated ADD for many people, and maybe not you, but for many people, it goes with chronic stress because of the negative things that tend to go along with it. The dysfunction. And for you, you're clearly not broken. But are you optimized? Do you have full access to your own brain? And I would argue no. And we can do and we can do better. But we can do it in steps. And ultimately, I see my job is giving people options and then telling them the pros and cons of each option and then letting them choose. If you love the Diver CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor. Become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously. And the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.